All right, on today's how-to, we're gonna learn how to check a pool pump impeller. The cleaning guys and gals use this to trash pump out or waste vac out uh, swimming pools, new swimming pools. It's a good way to get debris out of a customer's swimming pool without using their equipment. However, this thing takes a lot of abuse. And so what that means is it needs some TLC from time to time. And uh, I was told that it's not running correctly right now. So what we wanna do first, because when we clean out uh, new pools, there's a lot of junk that gets in there and that junk can clog up the impeller that's inside of here and it can cause the motor to overheat, to overwork and fail prematurely. So what we're gonna do is quickly take the motor end apart from the wet end of the pump and we're gonna take a look at the impeller and see if it's clogged up or not and it's causing some problems. So first off, there's four bolts, one, two, three, and four. One, two, and then two on the other side, three, four. These are nine sixteenths on all Hayward super pumps. This is a single speed pump. Don't really make these anymore, um, but we use them for our cleaning purposes, which is great. It can be wired 110 volt or, uh, or, or two, uh, 220 so or 115 230 is what it says on here it's one horsepower so really first step is these 9 16 bolts we're gonna take them out I'm lazy so I'm gonna use my drill you can use a wrench old-fashioned either way it's just fine Just like that these four are out and now you can see a little water seeping from the wet end of the pump out to where the motor is so there's a seal in here that stops that water from getting into the motor itself and those seals do go bad over time and those can allow water to get into the motor and uh, mess up the bearings in here and then it causes this motor to be replaced or need to be replaced so let's take a look so first steps first take this off you can kind of see inside of there that's what the inside of the wedding looks like looking up backwards at the basket so we're going to set that to the side this is called a diffuser is what it's called and it just it's not attached with anything it just sits in these grooves inside here and so it just comes off it's got a rubber gasket on it, lots of rubber gaskets all over the place. Anytime we replace the motor, we always put in new rubber gaskets all around on the wet end, on the diffuser, on the pump. So what we're gonna do now, aha, we are gonna take a look at the impeller. This is the impeller. Let's look in there. Rocks, it does spin, so that's a good sign. That tells me that the motor's not broken, so it's spinning. And I don't know what these little guys are, these little white beads. Maybe that's like some airsoft something, or maybe they're little pebbles from who knows what. But what needs to happen is we need to clean all of this stuff out because water flows through here. It's like a fan blade. And if the fan's clogged up, then it can't move water. And then also, let's take a look at the inside. You can kind of see it's gummed up on the inside as well. So I'm gonna take a screwdriver and just start prying this stuff out. We don't have to take anything else apart. It's just, this is clogged up. And this is how you troubleshoot that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a screwdriver and start pulling this stuff out. And then after we're done, we'll put it back together and we'll plug it in and see if it works.
Not really sure what some of this stuff is in here, but it's lodged in there pretty good, but it'll all come out. clean from the side. Sometimes you need to clean from the inside. You really need to do both. There's some silicone or something. I'm not sure what that is in there. You can find all kinds of stuff when you do this. This hole from up here goes all the way through to there. So that's where we need the water to be flowing through there. So if it's all clogged up, no water can flow through there. cleaned out. Four more to go or five more to go. Something like that. Take a screwdriver, kind of gently pry this stuff out. And once you get it out, just kind of clean it out some more. This is another example of where it's just clogged up all the way. 
all that stuff got to get, get out of there for this to work. So this is probably actually spinning the whole time, but not moving any water. And that made, that made the folks that were using it think that it wasn't working at all. But I'm guessing it was working. And it just wasn't moving any water, so they thought it wasn't working. Which is reasonable. I would do the same thing. Until I learned this. Again, I have no idea what these little things are. Just takes a little bit of patience. Just another one down. crazy thing is these are the the stones that made it past the basket and the pump so if your pump basket gets too full some of these stones can sneak around it and it leads to this problem so you kind of got to make sure you pace yourself when you're vacuuming out a lot of stones out of a new construction pool or this will happen pretty often and pretty quickly clean from this view. Now we just got to get that stuff out of there. You know what may work best for this? A quick spray with a water hose. Let's see. There's nothing in there that's too big getting stuck. All it usually takes is one little rock to cause a beaver dam in there for a lot of other little rocks. I am going to rinse that out with a water hose.
now that's rinsed out, that is closer to what it's supposed to look like. There are a few other things we can talk about while we've got it broken apart. Um, you know, there's some wear on the, on the impeller that happens, especially with the abuse that we put this thing through. But for today's purposes, we're going to put this back together and see if it works. So to put it back together, it is just as easy as we took it apart. Try to make sure there's nothing that's going to get in the way here. And we've got our diffuser. It's got the word top on it, top on there, top on there, so it's convenient. It tells us where the top is, and this actually says top there. Thank you, Hayward, for making that really easy for the rest of us. Kind of want to just check the rubber seal to make sure there's nothing really on it. Slide it back together, and then I usually go ahead and start the top ones by hand, just so it holds it in place. And then again, 9 sixteenths. Don't over tighten it because then, that's why the impact works nice, because then you'll actually mess up this housing, this plastic housing. snug otherwise you'll have a leak but you don't want it to be too tight and break something else all right I'm gonna run this extension cord over and plug it in and see, what, see what it sounds like actually just so I don't have to undo this whole extension cord I'm gonna take the pump with me All right, so you guys didn't get to see that, but I plugged it in and it sounded great. So I'm gonna actually grab an extension cord that's already unrolled and bring it over here and plug it in so you can see what it's supposed to sound like. All right, so here's what this should sound like when it's properly spinning and working right. Put your hand down here, you can feel the, the back cooling fan blowing air. That means the shaft that goes through this motor that goes onto that impeller is spinning. And so now we're able to move water that we clean out the impeller. So, hope you guys found that helpful. And what else? I guess that's just about it. That should should help you if you ever think that your pump's not moving water and you're trying to figure out why. That's one of the easiest things to do, and it's one of the quickest things to check is just check your impeller. It's probably clogged up. Thanks. <laughs>